get those dogs a barking for Crystal. See her at the novelty bed at the back to get your picture taken with Crystal. Next. Percy Spencer was one of the growing legions of men who cherished autographs from porn stars and strippers. Well, Miss Chambers, you sure have a deep throat. Thanks, kid. You got any blow, 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 blow? Hey, autograph mine, will ya? Here you go. She wrote she loved my package. Now everyone will think I banged a dripper. <laughs> Who'd believe that? Why would you want such an uncultured buffoon? A classy girl like you need. How do you want it? Oh. Ah! Mm. Hey, I needed that. Ladies and gentlemen, the feature act of the evening, Tina Tattoo from Denmark. Let's hear it for Tina. Going to pass out in the car, boy. Well, talk car. I'll be one of them anyways. You're the designated driver. Dag, no take back, Darth Hole. Uh, yeah, when you do that, sorry. Hey, Spencer, I got this as my co-op job for school. You should try it. Awesome way to cut class. Hey, kid, pay attention. You don't want to end up unemployed on a street corner turning tricks for nickels. Yes, sir. First thing you gotta know is the BPM mix. Then you crossfade between the two platters like this. Yeah, let's get with this. Timmy explained that being a co-op student with the DJ taught him valuable on-the-job lessons. Kevin was really impressed. He decided that the next time the school caught him drinking, he'd claim he needed real-world experience in a job placement. We know how we do. I don't suppose a fine strap and lad that yourself would be convicted to a table dance? But remember, I don't put out for anything under 200 bucks. No, oh, shit! Okay, 150! Hey, Poisey! You gotta sign something for- Ah, my freaking eye! <laughs> what the hell's that? It's a permission slip for Kevin to go on a school job placement. Jesus, why don't you watch out? You nearly blinded me, you bastard. Holy shit, don't worry, boy. Daddy won't let him force you to work. Hey, get me a beer, will you? <laughs> he wants to go. He says it'll get him out of school. Freak, ouch! I hear that. See if you can get a job at the peelers like that Timmy kid did. Save Daddy some cover charges. Hey, don't go getting no ideas about my beer either, prick. Everything's a big joke to you. What if you blinded me? Wouldn't that make you feel sorry or something? I felt sorry the first time I smelt your goddamn morning breath. I had dreams before I met you, you know. I was going to be the best pit fighter in the joint. But no, you had to live in a two-story house like some fucking millionaire. Besides, what are you pissing and moaning at me anyway? I wasn't aiming for your eyes. Kevin was excited about having a job placement. It would be a change of scenery. And meeting new people always meant that there was a chance that they wouldn't know what a loser he was for at least a few hours. What do you think you're doing getting on the bus covered in all that shit? Kevin's teacher was excited about the job placement because she wouldn't have to face these little bastards for at least a whole week. So students, it's time to tell the class about your job placements. 
I'm working with a bunch of ex-cons at the Pete Slaughterhouse. Die! <laughs> 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 it's amazing. You should see it. <laughs> As you can see, Kevin, these youngsters have benefited from real-world experience. And your job placement is a very special one. You'll be working with a world-famous conceptual artist. Kevin decided to be optimistic, and he went to his co-op that afternoon. He even ended up being three hours less late than he would normally have been, just to start out on the right foot. Are you the corp student who was supposed to be here seven months ago? Fabulous. Unsullied youth like morning dew emerge. I know, you're probably paralyzed by your feelings of worship for me. Kevin told the old boost up fart that he'd come for the job placement, and he asked if he always acted this fruity or just when he answered the door to scare away salespeople. Rage! Rage, boy, it's nature deemed! That's my telephone. Well, answer it, boy. Answer it! Chop, chop! Hello? Hello? Tron, are you there? Who is this? Somebody say something! Hello? God damn it, you have to face me sometime, you bastard! I don't just go down on every queen with an Alfa Romeo, you know! Hmm. I like your minimalist telephone manner. Now, before you try and sue me for doing anything to you, you should know the whole house has security cameras everywhere. Kevin asked Mr. Devonier what an artist does all day. This? My boy, it's the latest abstract piece. It's a videotape covered in jam and then rolled in hamster droppings. I'm lobbying to have it replace that stinky old war memorial. You wouldn't believe what the Ministry of Culture gave me for that thing. Kevin told the raving old queen that he didn't understand a goddamn word he was saying and to stop hogging all the liquor. What is the nature of your complaint? Your Honor, this man told me he loved me. Then he tried to poison me with antifreeze in my food. Then he took all my money, credit cards, jewelry, and tried to skip town. And you say you are presently still with this man? He's going through a rough period. I brought a witness, Your Honor. Look at the dress on that woman. I bet she's guilty. Ah, uh, look at the outfit. See what else is on. What? Lost the remote? No problem. You'll love this. You wouldn't believe the places that things turned up. Kevin didn't have many friends with big screen TVs, and it was pretty neat. Big screen TVs had problems you didn't typically see in normal TVs like families of vermin moving into the set. So whenever they tried to watch porno, John Holmes wasn't the only one trying to squirrel his nuts away for the winter. What the fuck? Oh, oh. Come on! You goddamn chipmunks! Alvin! Oh wait, Alvin was last year's co suit. Kevin! Why don't you earn your keep and do something about those little monsters? I'm upset. I'll be in the boudoir. And see if you can find me some Batman sheets, for Christ's sake. In queen sizes this time. Thank you very much. After a few days, Kevin figured the life of an artist must be pretty good. If all you do all day is get drunk, you tell teens to do your shit work. On his third day of moving patio stones, he asked the artist when he was going to do something artistic. Don't you understand? You are the art idiot. In lifting those patio stones, you're becoming a part of the bigger canvas. 
Now, get the piano into the attic. There's a good lad. I need room for the orgy, uh, <clears throat> party tonight. Hey, Spencer, you got an overdue porno I loaned you? Which one? Do the words good time prison bitch ring a bell? It used to be my nickname, stuck in that shitty DVD player you told me. That was a CD player, and the movie was VHS, you booze hound. Now what the hell you want? I gotta get something nice for the old lady. I just feel kinda bad because I nailed her with the toenail. Ooh, better not use a pillow. Next time she might kill you. Want some tissue for that nose? Fuck off and tell me something nice I can buy her to get her off my ass. She like jewelry? Some of this shit looks pretty realistic. Just tell me what she likes. I ain't psychic. I don't know. Anything to do with sex, I suppose. Really, huh? Hey, Spencer. How'd you like to make 50 bucks? Can I take it in liquor? Hey, that's Charlie's hydroponics equipment. I sold that shit once. Let's just say he's trying to, uh, cover his assets. Why does it smell so weird? See if you can wrap your head around this, Spencer. I was on the internet last year, and I realized I could buy Nobel Prize sperm and supermodel's eggs. So, I'm using Charlie's equipment to incubate a super baby. Super baby? Holy fuck, Jimmy. You sure ain't been the same since rehab. Should have stayed on the wagon like I told you. Hey, I still need a present for the old lady. I need human hosts, Percy. I want to know if you'll let me stick some of them in your wife's ovaries. I've been looking for volunteers. What better gift than a super baby? Oh, sorry, Jimmy. Two kids and 47 abortions have already done a number on the old lady. I ain't sitting through another nine months of my life taking shit from some fat pig and her hormones. It was the night of Tron's big party, and Kevin said he was about due for a bit of partying himself. You're... a bit young for this party, Kevin. Ah, he seems quite old enough for me. No, he's not! For God's sakes, Gunther! This isn't Thailand! Come back tomorrow, boy. It's your last day, so we'll do something special then. You like sandwiches? Kevin returned home and told his mom about the big gay sex orgy the rich guy was having. Shit, I wish I was a rich gay boy. I'd drink all day and bang a different soccer team every night. Oh yeah, man, that'd be sweet. Hey baby, look at this. Classic of porn. <laughs> Like that's supposed to make up for you being an asshole and nearly blinded me. I went over there to get you something nice. Then Jimmy showed me his baby making sperm machine and I got all distracted. Percy told Anastasia all about Jimmy's scheme. Jesus Christ, Boise, we need that sperm. What the fuck are you talking about? If we have a super genius kid, he'll be able to get rich and employed. Then we can live like millionaires! Instead of rotting with this unemployed retard! Hey, I never thought of that. It's like a sure bet the kid'll be a brainiac. I'll go tell Jimmy the deal's on. You can't tell him. He'll want to raise the kid himself. You'll have to steal some. You came all the way back here to tell me you wanted to use the bathroom? You were gone a half an hour. Yeah, it, it, it's a bad one too, Jimmy. I can feel the blood leaving my head, know what I mean? <laughs> Just past the point of no return, Jimmy! Well, hurry up. I'm closing up just as soon as I finish testing out these Walkmans. Thanks 
for the shitter, Jimmy. Gotta go. Hey, what's that on your hand? Is that my sperm? Why this? This is spermicide! You bastard! How'd it go, lover boy? I got the stuff. I thought he wouldn't notice if I tried replacing it with my own, but he caught me anyways. Barely got out the door with my ass. You're so brave. What a man of action. I'm boiling up here. <laughs> I got the hose that'll put out that fire, baby. Oh, Boisey, give me that rich bastard spam. Maybe I don't want to. <laughs> Maybe, maybe I want to keep it. Oh, yes. Oh, oh, yes. Damn you, give it to me. Give me that spoil, you bastard. We's gonna have us our own little millionaire. Oh, yeah. What the? Oh, oh now you, now you done it, you stupid pig. I told you not to swallow. Wasn't that you? Well, I can't see under here. Well, that's just fucking beautiful. When Kevin returned to the estate, the place was messier than he'd ever seen it, which was still better than his own house. Kevin also noticed something different about the artist. He seemed a lot deader than usual. This is organized crime with your monthly delivery. Listen, we're going to be in around 3 p.m. to drop 47 tons of Peruvian hashish. Is someone going to be there to sign for all this? Kevin said there'd been a mistake, and they were actually supposed to drop off 100 tons. Then Kevin proceeded to take over the threads of the departed man's life, which was pretty easy, considering the old bastard was so reclusive, no one would really notice him missing for a few years anyways. You are watching the Arts and Culture Channel, intelligent television for people who can afford it. Tonight on the Art and Culture Channel, Tron de Veneer, the artistic rebel who snagged the largest price ever paid for an old shoe. The medium is the message Messiah is staging a comeback at the Culture Center. Seen here receiving the 1998 Eccentric Bastard Award from the cryogenically frozen corpse of Howard Hughes, it is rumored by insiders that the man himself, Tron, may make an appearance. It was the day of the big art exhibition, and Kevin had arranged for all the media and clients of Mr. Devonier to attend. Well, of course. Warhol's problem was that he was a better businessman than he was an artist. Cheap bastard, too. You know, I was in one of his films. Really? Which one? Don't recall. Something with Dennis Hopper and a lot of lint. Guess I don't have to tell you who upstaged who. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin was excited because the moment arrived when Tron was to deliver his next creation to the art world. Kevin had erected the corpse of the dead artist himself as an exhibit. While Kevin was being beaten and locked away for criminal neglect and fraud, the effect this exhibition would have on the post-postmodernist scene was debated heatedly for weeks. Something weird ended up happening at Jimmy's pawn shop. 
The closest Percy Spencer had ever come to having sex with a real supermodel was the magazine he'd shoplifted from the convenience store. So when his seminal discharge was mixed with the supermodel's eggs, it wasn't natural. In fact, nature really hadn't factored in a combination for that particular genome, so it began to mutate. seeing this strip club before. Better not cross the path. 